Hello. Hi. How Hi. are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Lovely to see you. You as well. You look amazing. I love that blouse you're wearing. Thank you. I, I'm loving your vibe with the chair and the prints. <laughs> it's funny because I can never, even though I've done a million of these, I never know how close I'm going to be to the like screen. So I'm always like, it starts, I'm like moving around trying to get the perfect seat. <laughs> I know. Me and you both. Like, do I put my phone on the boxes or on here? <laughs> Um, anyway, we're so excited to have you today, Melissa. Uh, yes, I'm so excited uh, to be doing this with you guys and ha excited to chat with you. Yeah, me too. Well, I have a bunch of questions. Before we get started, to anyone um, on your side that's joining, um, just to tell you a little more about this series. Basically, um, we created this series to really uphold my grandmother's legacy. She was a powerhouse. Um, and such a trailblazer for women. So we started this to really have conversations like yourself with women who are kind of leading the way today and um, discuss, you know, all the important issues that are circulating in our current times. So thank you everyone for joining and for being here. And um, I also just wanna say this at the beginning, if anyone has any questions, uh, make sure to drop them in the question box because we'll be circling back to those in a little bit. Wonderful. Amazing. Um, so, Melissa, to jump right in, I know you started your career as an actress. Kind of, can you tell us a little bit more about how you started that journey, what that looks like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I grew up in New Jersey and I'm I would run around telling everyone that I was going to be an actress. And it was one of those things where I have no family in the industry. So as much as I would say that, a real manifester, I didn't actually think it was truly possible because I didn't, I was thinking very small. Like I didn't even think I would go to California, let alone go be an actress. And, and you know, my mom would take me to auditions uh, growing up. And then when I got to college, um, for international marketing and business. It was my last year in school when I studied abroad in Paris, where all my peers there, it was a very big European thing to take a year or two off after school to travel. And I said, wait a minute, doing this to travel, why don't I do this to go actress? <laughs> and so I just that, um, I moved out to California, I was gonna give it a year um, and try out acting and it stuck. So I stayed with it knowing that one day I would move back to the career I studied and here we are. <laughs> wow. So what, what was your major in school? Was it? International marketing and business. <laughs> Believe it or not, you as during acting, you really do have to market yourself. So yeah, it's a major I recommend for, for a lot of Yeah, you gotta promote your personal brand. It's the strongest one you have. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, so I guess along that journey, like what kind of, I guess it sounds like you always knew that you would kind of come back to this more like business minded career, but was, was it like a gradual thing? Like what kind of set you on this track from actress to, you know, really focusing on um, entrepreneurship? Yeah, so I, I never ever gave myself a deadline. You know, I, I think it's challenging, you know, when you're young or even, you know, in your 30s, 40s, to put pressure on yourself to find something you want to do. I think it needs to speak to you. So I always knew I would wait till something spoke to me and I was in no great rush. It could have been when I was 50 or 60. It just was something I knew I wanted to do one day. And it wasn't until um, I grew up all my life with digestive issues and I just kind of ignored them. I was growing up in a chicken farm and, you know, have five cheat days and healthy days a week. And I would stay thin. Like, this is great. And then it just, you know, I started getting sick. I started getting really bad brain fog. Um, I started feeling inflamed and just overall not well. Uh, and my sister got really into health and wellness, um, ironically, because of her finance career. So I asked her for help. I said, you know, get me on your program. I'll do what you do. And she's like, okay, let's try some bone broth. And at first I was like, no, you know, like just I'll eat healthy and work out with you. I'm not trying bone broth. 
cut dried bone broth um, and we'd grab it hot on the go in New York. And yeah, I started to see what it did for me. And I, I loved the, you know, being habitual about it. So I started drinking it. Not only did it cure my inflammation, but it got rid of my brain fog, which I thought was so bizarre. And now obviously I know why. Um, and it helped my cartilage and I started to see what it would do for my face. I'm someone who's tried every skincare product, lasers, like Botox, and I couldn't believe that bone broth was the thing that helped me. This. So that's when I went to continue this routine in Los Angeles. And I figured out pretty quickly that it wasn't as easily accessible in Los Angeles like it was in New York. So, okay, taking a step back for a second, Melissa, anyone from the Anne Klein side, before I ask you, because I have a million like stomach issues as well, so I have some personal questions, but um, can you tell us just a little bit more about Beauty in the Broth and um, kind of like what, what your product is, how it's different from everything else on the market? Absolutely. I know, I know, but yes. please, tell, please tell everyone else. <laughs> So what I love about Beauty in the Broth is two things. Um, the first thing is the product. And what I've achieved is that model I loved in New York, the grab and go. But except this grab and go is in all 50 states and in Canada. Um, so our product is the only kind across the country where both the chicken and beef are all USDA organic. It's shelf stable with zero preservatives and it's in single serve concentrated format. So the concentration I like to liken to La Mer, um, where your average, right? Uh, <laughs> where your average bone broth has um, three bricks, which is the measure of solids. Our bone broth has 25 bricks. So it's extremely potent. So all you need is seven to eight ounces of hot water. And what's great about that is some people, you know, are like bone broth's not for me, I want it more weak. They have or some people really, you know, like it strong, so they have less water. Um, but regardless of your tolerance for bone broth, all, ours is also unique because not only do we use all very clean ingredients, um, we also use luxury ingredients like turmeric and ginger and kelp. So ours actually has real flavor. Um, you know, a lot of complaints I would get from my peers is that bone broth is either too gamey or too weak and ours. And something that people cannot believe is that there's no salt added. There's no salt in our ingredients. The mm -hmm. only um, comes from the breakdown of the bones and the vegetables. So for a bone broth to be low sodium is huge because 90% of the bone broths on the market are pretty high in sodium. So nutritionists recommend to make it at home. So yeah. the problem one uh how you, so how did you get your um like the ingredients and the process right because i will admit i tried to make my own about two weeks ago and it was absolutely disgusting <laughs> it, it was um especially to get bone broth consistent i did many 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 months of preparing it at home and trying to be consistent um so that was challenging because even if you change the slightest thing, it tastes totally different than last time. Yeah. And so it was a lot of practice. And from there, you know, I found a supply chain and we went back and forth, back and forth to get the formulations a hundred percent. And it was, um, I had a big decision to make uh, the month before launch because we went back and forth uh, with, practicing the recipe and then recipe lock that's what they're gonna you know make on the larger scale and when the product came out it was very good but it wasn't great the greatness is what i was so excited about and they're like melissa we are so confident that this is a great product and it's going to sell and you don't have to pay us until every last unit is sold and as a startup as an entrepreneur you know a, a small wow obviously a very attractive option. So I said, you know, let me think about it over the weekend. I sat on it and I'm like, you know what, that enthusiasm I get about it, it sounds great. Guys, I'm sorry, we need to ship it back, we need to fix it. And that was great, making that decision. But I'm 
proud of because you know that's our brand's values and that's the one thing that is rave about is the flavor of our product so never looked back on that since wow yeah i mean that's a hard decision to make never settle i guess right that's the lesson don't get me wrong it was very good but i wanted it to be lights out <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's and so what are kind of like the different benefits of bone broth i think it's like one of those kind of things that have slowly entered the market and people know it's like good for you, but they don't exactly know like why or what exactly it can target. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So uh, bone broth has been around since caveman days. The cavemen, they broke down all of the animal used all of it. And, you know, I've gotten really deep into what this healing means, but, you know, I'll do high level, then I'll explain a bit about the gut. High level bone broth's original purpose is for leaky gut. So when you have poor digestion, food seeps through your gut and red blood cells go to fight it and it makes you sick and inflamed. So bone broth comes in and literally fills the holes in your gut in to make everything pass through seamlessly while pumping you with natural occurring collagen, proteins, and amino acids. So just with that, you're talking collagen. So that's great for your hair, skin, and nails. I, at one point, I swear, I drank it every week with my sister. I We had to stop for a week. It made our hair too thick. Like I couldn't. Wow. And, um, you know, I personally seen, um, you know, what I used to get Botox and when it would wear off, it was like a timer went off. And, you know, that timer has completely went away for me. Um, and then 85% of our immunity is in our gut. So it's very immune boosting. It's great post-workout recovery, great joints. Um, but then I love to tell people a little bit about the gut, because this is also why I got rid of my brain. Our personalities are in our guts, emotion, anxiety, depression. So if you have brain fog, it's because all the microbes in your gut are just probably overwhelmed consuming bad stuff so bone broth goes in there and regulates it so it could literally affect your mood um it also curbs my appetite after i do a tough workout i'll have bone broth um wow. so it's nourishing and so i'm just very topic i think that the more we learn about the gut being our core second brain the more people are going to drink bone broth like coffee or tea 100 percent do you recommend having it every day or like how often is it, is there any such thing as like having it too much? I mean, uh, too much of anything is a bad thing, but I definitely recommend having it every day. I think bone broth needs to be a routine, just like you wash your face and do skincare. If you want to see some of those skin benefits, um, because if you have bad skin, it normally is from your gut. Uh, so you know, if you want to see results, make it a routine, have it every day. And I wouldn't, I would say don't have more than like five cups a day. Cause there's some people out there that literally will do bone broth fasts. Um, but I would definitely incorporate it into your routine. Yeah. And how long did it kind of like take you to start to see those like miracle results? For me, it took about two weeks. I, you know, they say, of anything 20 days but for me my sister took two weeks wow that's super fast i mean i feel like today what i mean everything in like health and wellness right now is so focused on the gut and digestion and that's such a common issue that i feel like for so long people just kind of were like oh this is just like way the way your body should feel and we're kind of just waking up and realizing like no, like this isn't right. And also like the depression I'm feeling or the anxiety I'm feeling is, t is not just tied to one singular thing. It's like a whole, it's treating your body as a whole. Absolutely. I, a couple of weeks ago, I was in a Florida and of course doing what I do best, telling people about the bone broth and telling them about the links to anxiety and depression you know, stemming from our guts. And, you know, 30 minutes later, a girl at this get together, and she's like, I really resonated with what you said. And she said, a couple of years, ago, I suffered from really bad depression. I tried every medicine to try. 
really looked at me and I wanted to cry. She said, I was almost not here today. And she said, I started doing all this research about it. I started, so everything was pointing that it leads back to the gut. She did a complete gut reset and she maintains her gut, has not suffered from anxiety and depression since. Wow. That yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, oh, that's, that's really powerful. I Absolutely. think like, yeah, I mean, it's not just about I, the, um, the skin elasticity elements and having stronger hair and nails is amazing, but the power to really transform your mood and like knowing that some of the things that affect you day to day, like aren't you. I think yeah. is like so powerful and such a important message that people learn because I think like a lot of times in medicine, that approach is just like not being taken. I, I agree. And I completely agree. And it's crazy. You really can cure yourself through your gut, through your diet. And, you know, every day I just learn more and more about this and it blows my mind. And so one fact that sits with me that, you know, to me, it's just, like the holy grail of facts is that our guts contain a hundred thousand times more microbes than human beings on planet earth. So that makes me feel like they're almost all galaxies and we have over a hundred thousand times the world population in our guts. And they're just, you know, you are what you eat. They're feeding upon what you eat. So that statistic makes me just mind blown to what goes on in there that we don't even know about yet. Yeah, that that kind of gave me the chills a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so taking it back for a second, I mean, through this journey, it sounds like you've learned, I mean, so much about your body and just the human body in general, how to like better serve yourself and others. But what would you say has been kind of like your biggest lesson so far as an entrepreneur? My biggest lesson as an entrepreneur, a man, I, I swear I learn every day, but something that, you know, if everyone would be doing it and every week, I'm not kidding, is a new set of problems. And, uh, you know, and there's problems and you could take two routes. You could deal with it or you could freak out about it. And I remember at the beginning of this, you know, I would really stress out. And something I taught myself that I learned is, hey, this is a choice. Like you're doing this because you want to do it. And whenever I do that, it really makes me calm down and say, okay, how do you deal with this? Uh, so that's one thing I learned. And another one, I realized you know, it's, it's a little bit like a game of poker. It's definitely a constant moving target and you have to keep everything going at the same time and not let something wait because that component's waiting. And it's a little bit scary, but if you have to believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing and know that it will all work out and be okay. Yeah. And I'm sure that as an entrepreneur, you always have like friends coming to you asking you for your advice. So for everyone out there watching who, you know, might have dreams to start their own company, um, what would your like number one piece of advice be to them? So my piece of advice, honestly, would be do it. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think a lot of people, they get scared of the, they get scared to, you know, to not follow their dreams because of all the barriers to entry, capital constraints, the security and what they're currently doing. But you you truly live one life and you want to look back at it and do everything you do. Ask yourself, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? The answer is literally nothing. Um, so my advice is do it. And how do you do it? I literally started my journey when I said, okay, I want to start a company. I swear to God, my first words on Google, how to start a business. I, I found everything I needed to do on the internet, and so we're lucky to have that resource. And I literally, I started calling farms at first, and let me tell you, that was not the place you call. Um, but it was part of the journey. Those farms lead me to other phone calls, and those phone calls would lead me to where I needed to be. So I also think the power of just saying it out loud and telling people, you find the missing you need to start your journey effectively. No, a hundred percent. Cause I feel like when you also just, 
I mean, when I was starting my company, even before I was like doing it, I was just saying I was doing it. <laughs> and that opens up so many doors because people will like say, oh, you know, I have this friend that you should meet that knows a lot about this. Um, and the conversation just starts. And ultimately, it's usually the people around you and the people that are in your community that are the ones that support your journey and kind of help you with all those answers. Absolutely. And I love your journey. You're an absolute power app. <laughs> um, well, I guess I'd say the biggest thing I always think of, like looking back, I personally try to start my day like this and in every difficult situation, I think of like the mentors in my life. Um, and maybe this is putting them on a pedestal a little bit, but I always like in difficult situations, especially I'm like, what would they do? Um, and I think that really helps to look at like what your um, kind of calling it like your heart self and like your thinking self would do. And you want to always go with kind of like the more rational route and not just like totally be guided by your emotions. So I try to think back to those people, like what would they do? So who are the mentors in your life, Melissa, that are kind of like the ones that stand out for you that kind of guide your journey every day? Man, so I, I just look at so many facets and, you know, topics, whether it's founders or, you know, inventors. Um, so I love to look at people who just kind of went for it, that did a huge career transition, and to, you know, point out people like Jessica Alba, Gwyneth Paltrow, who just did a complete 180 and became the successful businesswoman, uh, that pivoted careers effectively. Um, and I, I love also, you know, I, another kind of mentor, um, someone that their family started you know, their business, the old, you know, American dream way, where in the food business, and, you know, now they have like thousands of plants, and it's still family run and operated. So I just admire people who don't give up and don't quit. And I find and mentorship and different yeah that's amazing I mean those are some women I love their podcasts um so I couldn't agree more they're very inspirational um so I've seen a bunch of awesome questions come in I'm just looking through let's see okay Um, okay, Katie asks um, what the differences in flavors between the two options and like what they can, how you would use it in your, um, like in cooking a meal. Sure. So the, we launched with chicken and beef. We have a vegan on the way, which is very exciting. The chicken, I would say is lower sodium. It has turmeric and ginger, obviously chicken. Um, and it does not contain garlic. So I know it's a, uh, compliant with a lot of the autoimmune protocols i have a garlic allergy so i i'd mostly appreciate that <laughs> and the beef does have garlic which you know garlic is great um to detoxify if you could have that in your diet and it also has mushrooms, which is awesome um the difference in flavor i would say that the chicken tastes more clean um but you could the turmeric and ginger definitely come through and then the beef doesn't taste like any other beef bone broth which i love it tastes more mushroomy and it tastes more hearty but it's a different kind of taste and for cooking we make a bunch of stuff with it on our page the broth you find a bunch of recipes some of my favorite ones um you know we'll make quinoa and in, instead of water we will use the beef bone broth and make a quinoa bowl. I obviously love making soup with it. We made awesome chicken enchiladas where we cooked everything in the chicken broth. Mm. Um, we also make smoothies with it and the smoothies are actually very, so I, I love cooking with it. I love just consuming it as a drink after I have my coffee. Love that. Yeah, that's making me hungry haven't had breakfast yet <laughs> other than bone broth like what is your everyday diet and how do you stay healthy everyday diet um 
So I really, every morning I wake up, I need to be near a coffee shop. I walk my dogs, go get coffee. Right after that, I have a cup of bone broth and I start to do my laptop work. And I don't have, um, I don't typically have breakfast. I just have broth. Um, and for lunch, I'll either, I'll either have like a salad or um, some kind of cauliflower rice bowl. And then for dinner, you know, I'll either have you know, a simply grilled salmon or chicken. And I'm, you know, I'm not a perfect eater. I'm just someone who, who really tries. And it's become really important for my health to eat healthy um, and remain consistent. So I'm trying to change my relationship with food and look at it as something that fuels my vehicle versus, you know, something I love because I'm a huge eater. Um, but definitely, you know, trying to keeping things consistent makes you and, and developing a routine helps me stay consistent. Yeah, it's exactly. I think it's all about finding that balance and not straying like too far to one direction and making sure you're kind of like coming up with a diet that you can maintain, which is something I've also definitely learned to balance over the years where like you maybe, I feel like a few years ago, kind of try those like fad, you know, yeah. diets or eating lifestyles, um, but finding something that just like works for you that you love and you can envision yourself doing long term is so important. Absolutely. I, I agree. Something sustainable. Um, you know, I'll, my favorite food, chicken parm. I'll even, you know, sometimes treat myself, of course, but uh, you know, That's it's my husband's too. If you have a good recipe, let me know. <laughs> I, I've converted it into keto chicken farm. So, you know, you can oh, make I'm keto. So that's perfect. Yeah. You can put <laughs> modifications to anything, which is, um, so never deprive yourself, you know, a little bit of things you like or modifications will keep, keep you happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it was amazing speaking with you and, there is so much about bone broth that I personally didn't know. So um, I, I already do love it, but I'm excited to like integrate it more into my daily schedule um, because I feel like I should definitely be drinking it a lot more than I do. Uh, totally. I, I, I know in my gut, no pun intended, that this is, this is. <laughs> 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 um, well, I will, for everyone watching, um, I will link Beauty in the Broth on our Instagram story so you guys can go check it out. And um, I'll leave the link in our caption um, so you guys can quickly click over and um, learn more about Melissa's amazing company, Beauty in the Broth. Thank you so much, Jesse. It was so great to see you. And I'm honored chatting with you on Anne Klein. Yeah, me too. Um, I hope everything is amazing in New York. Hit me up when you're back in LA. I will. I can't <laughs> Marlena. Perfect. Okay. All right. Take care. See you when I'm back. Bye. All right.